Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. There's perfect surf out there today, double overhead sets, corduroy to the rise, and I'm stuck here with a couple of guys, Father Sinclair Oob and Andy Sonia, two distinguished gentlemen. When I asked Father uh, Sinclair to pray before we started our radio show, he said he had prayed to St. Jude, the, the, the saint uh, who you pray to for hopeless causes, and I'm really not sure how to take that. Actually, I am quite sure. <laughs> How I should take that. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today we have Father Sinclair Oob and Andy Sonier. They're, they're two of the men that are putting together the Christ in You Men's Conference, September 26th in Orange, Texas, uh, that I'm going to get to uh, be speaking at. And afterwards we get to ride, uh, do the Distinguished Gentleman Motorcycle Ride. We'll talk about what that means. But I wanted to start out just by saying that there is really a crisis of manliness in the world today. They, we, we have this spectrum of chauvinistic, egotistic men to almost genderless males, but we're not seeing what I define as a real man are men that live by the virtues, the seven virtues of justice, self-mastery, fortitude, prudence, faith, hope, and love. But there's, there's a grittiness that seems to be lacking in men today. It's almost like men have to apologize for being manly. I used to talk about masculine spirituality, and I don't do that anymore. Uh, I talk about manliness, uh, the politically incorrect statement of manliness. You know, when God created Adam and Eve, he created Adam out of the earth. You know, he formed Eve out of his out of his ribs. She was a higher, more fully distilled, I guess, quality to her than men do. But men are supposed to be earthy. We're supposed to be gritty. Uh, we're supposed to be tough. We're supposed to be wise. We're supposed to lay down our lives um, you know, when the Catholic Church talks about love, it doesn't use... Uh, I remember when they made the King Jimmy Bible, they changed the Catholic word for caritas, for love of charity, to the word uh, love. It's hard to translate the word agape into English. We really don't have a good word for that. But the Catholic Church uses the word caritas, charity. And I always go, man, why do they say charity? I mean, it's not like we're going to go give something to Salvation Army or something. Um, but the Protestant translation is just the word love which, uh, you know, the Bible doesn't say God so loved the world that he felt all warm and gushy inside. It said that he gave his son. Caritas is a love that gives. Uh, true love, uh, as Aquinas says, is willing the true good for the other. And our beautiful uh, Saint Pope John Paul II talked about how love is self-donation. And that's what it is, willing the true good for the other through self-donation. Simply having an opinion that wills the true good for someone is nothing. Feeling all warm and gushy inside is nothing. Giving yourself in love is what love really is. And I, so that's why I really love the Catholic Church's version of that. And that is, why, that is why we're calling men to true manliness, which is the act of sacrificial love for those that God has given you kuleana for, a stewardship for in your life. And we have two men like that. I met Father... Sinclair for the first time in Houston at a men's event uh, that we had. You saw it in Long Ride Home. I think it was episode two or episode three. And I was just so fired up to see him and, and so many other uh, Catholic bikers. And then I bumped into Andy, I guess, at the CMLA event, the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance event in Dallas. So uh, somehow I talked him into letting me come out and speak at the Christ in You uh, men's conference on September 26th. So welcome, distinguished gentlemen, to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks for having us. Thanks Bear. for having us. Great to be here. So, Father, can you give us a little, just, just both, I want to ask both of you a little bit about just your personal testimony. How is it uh, that uh, y your love for Jesus and your, your calling to the priesthood? Well, it, it, is, it is certainly something that's grown over time. Uh, but I remember back in fourth grade, I, I made the mistake of telling uh, my fourth grade sister teacher at St. James School in Port Arthur, 
that I wanted to be a priest, which of course she told my parents, which was the last thing that I wanted them to do at that point. But I sort of set out in that direction. But I will say that there's a big difference between being trained to be a priest and learning to be a priest. And in fact, actually incorporating yourself into persona Christi, acting mm. and being in persona Christi. Uh, and that really is more of a spiritual journey that I've, I've really grown to appreciate more as I've been in the priesthood for this time. Uh, for for these years, I've, I've what, now what do you mean by persona Christi for those who may not know? Well, act, acting in the person of Christ, and so it's very clear that when the priest is at the altar and he takes the bread and the wine and he offers them up at, at that time, that he is acting in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, mm. Protestants will often challenge us and say, you know, why do you go to a priest to go to confession? Because only God can forgive your sins. Sort of quoting from the scriptures at that mm. point. And my response is, you're absolutely correct. But because I have been ordained and received the sacrament of holy orders in the second order, first and second order, which is diaconate and the priesthood, with the ordination of the priesthood, my my role is to act in the person of Jesus Christ. And so I do that at the altar. I do that in the sacrament of reconciliation. I do that at the uh, at the anointing of the sick. Whenever whenever I truly act as Jesus acted when people were brought to him who were sick. And so beginning to incorporate, making that distinction between learning how to do stuff yes. and then incorporating that into a more authentic way of when I am acting in those times that I am actually acting in the person of Jesus Christ, which is profoundly humbling. And it's a scary thing to, to move into. It's much easier to just do the stuff and not have to deal with the complication of actually acting in the person of Jesus Christ because it can be absolutely overwhelming. Mm. Um, that's the real challenge that, that is there. And so a lot of it's very easy just to, to stay. But but what happens is after you've done the, the lectionary cycle for Sunday, and now I've done that 10 going on 11, no, 11 times going on 12 times. What you mean by the cycle, the three-year cycle? Well, it, after the Second Vatican Council, the, uh, the Council Fathers really thought seriously about the importance of the Word of God and mm -hmm. really immersing the Catholic community in the Word of God. And so if a Catholic goes to Mass every Sunday and listens to the Scriptures, that they will get almost all the four Gospels, uh, most of the Prophets, and a big chunk of the Old Testament, almost all of St. Paul and the pastoral epistles also. And they will and the hear Psalms, those yeah. words and the Psalms and, and receive that within themselves so that over three years, they will have heard the majority of the Bible as they come to Mass there. And so, so after doing that now, twelve, mm -hmm. almost 12 times, mm -hmm. um, to break the thing of just being ordinary or the habit and to actually begin to incorporate that and interior, interiorize it becomes important. And that's that movement into not just doing what priest does, but living in the sanctuary of what the priest does, which is become the person of Christ when he does these sacramental things. So beautiful. You know, I got to say, during this uh, Eucharistic famine, we finally, those who are listening to this, uh, our, uh, uh, those who are Patreon subscribers, by the way, um, they get this, this show immediately on video. But the radio version of this will go out months later. So I'm referencing uh, that Eucharistic famine that we've been going through. We just got to go to Mass uh, yesterday, uh, this last weekend, for the first time in, in a couple of months. And I'll tell you, sometimes one of the priests there, um, I just, he just, it just kind of grates. It just, I just... I just don't care for his homilies and things like that, right? And uh, going to Mass, though, uh, on uh, on this particular, the first time going back, as I walked into the church, it was like the word in, in persona Christi just just blew a hole through my heart, you know? And because uh, having been through the Eucharistic famine and so desiring to be with a priest, and so through the whole time, it was like a whole new perspective, Father, came came to me. Uh, in persona Christi, in persona Christi, this is uh, this priest is 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 acting in the in the in, as in, as presenting. I don't know exactly how you say it in the 
in the person of Jesus Christ, and I and I I just focused on the sacredness of being in His presence, well as well as in the Eucharistic presence. So it's so interesting, you brought that up. It was like just a whole change took place in me, uh, and I think lar a large part is because I had been taking so much for granted being able to go to mass every day. We got to take a quick break here in a moment. We got Andy Sonia with us. Andy's one of the one of the leaders too of the of the men's conference. There. When is the men's conference, Andy? When is it? September 26th of uh, 2020. And where is it? Orange, Texas. Saint Francis I've heard. What is it? What's that? St. Francis of Assisi Church. Orange, so if they, if they want to find out more, where do they go? Christinu.info. Christinu.info. And so if you guys want to uh, see these radio shows instead of just listen to them. And by the way, if you could see how handsome these guys are. <laughs> you'd want to you'd want to watch this on YouTube. You can go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our email and we send it we send the YouTube version of the show to you the day before it airs on EWTN. But if you go to our website, you can also click on the Patreon page and go there and then you can uh, subscribe there and you get them released to you uh, months early. So uh, we encourage you to do that. You can see how distinguished these gentlemen are. We're going to talk about that, right? Father, we're going to talk about the distinguished metal the Distinguished Gentleman Motorcycle Ride that we're going to do in Texas when we get there in September. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, Andy, I, Sonia is here with me with Father Sinclair Oob, uh, both down there in Orange, Texas. I've heard of Texas. I don't know. I, th I thought Orange, Texas was just a rumor, but I guess it's a real place. Real uh, place. <laughs> but Andy's a member of, uh, of Bear's Man Cave. And we, uh, I refer to that as kind of, there's the cave of Adullam, you know, that David, King David, had to flee to when King Saul was chasing him all over the place. And it's said that every kind of rabble rouser or misfit or people that owed money joined him there at the cave. And God formed those men into mighty warriors that became the warriors, the, mili the, the men of mighty valor uh, of King David. And so we are challenging uh, men through the, the Christ in You event on September 26th in Orange, Texas, the men's conference there, and through the Man Cave. And there's so many men's conferences. Uh, you can go to cmla.com, I think it's the website, Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. There's probably 50 men's conferences going on in Canada and in the United States that you can find there in your local area. But we need to gather all the knuckle draggers and all the misfits together. Men... Uh, tend to be ashamed of the challenges that they have in their lives. We all think we need to be John Wayne or Clint Eastwood or Rambo and just tough it out by ourselves. But that's not the way men are formed. Men are formed in the company of other men. Iron sharpens iron. And so like it, it bears man cave, which you can join by going to deepadventure.com. Uh, men are challenging each other, equipping each other, encouraging, mobilizing, but 
we're all bozos on the same bus. We're all we every failing that you've had, one of our men there has had it worse. And so we are we you know we we help each other and encourage each other. I know like when I see a new surfer go out in the water, they're kind of embarrassed. They know what what we call them a kook, right? They know oh, they can't even surf. But for every surfer that sees a kook out in the water, it's not like that for us. We're like, oh, I'm so excited. This guy's experiencing surfing for the first time. So wherever you are in this whole spectrum of your walk and your journey with the Lord, you're welcome to come to these men's conferences and, and come to a, a Bears Man Cave. We have Father Sinclair Ub with us, who's a biker, and Andy Sonier, who's uh, well, Andy, you know, the thing, when I think of you, I have to think of only one thing, and you know what it is. Whataburgers. <laughs> you know, I was going to go to Whataburger before this and just have a cup and take oh. a sip just to charge you a little bit, but I said, no, nah, it's a little too over the top. You're evil. We, we met together somewhere near Orange, Texas, right, and had a Whataburger together. Yeah, we did. I just remember going to Texas. Uh, we moved there from Santa Cruz, California to Waco, Texas when I was a junior, end of my junior year in high school. My dad said, go get some burgers. So I just, well, there's a place, Whataburger. And I said, give me big of everything. And I was like, oh, man, everything's big in Texas. And the best burgers in the – you know, I'll tell you, Andy, I had a chance to go to a Baylor football game last year. And right. this is – there's a Whataburger and an In-N-Out burger within 100 yards of each other. And I went to both on the same day. And I wasn't sure, is that a mortal sin or a miracle? I, I, I think sure. it's, a, it's a sliver of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're glad we're glad you joined us, Andy. Can you share with us a little bit about just your testimony and then what you see as the crisis of manliness in, in the world today? Uh, yeah, I, I grew up uh, average kid, uh, son of a farmer. Uh, first earliest memories of my life was uh, attending daily mass with with my dad uh, before daylight. Really? Um, oh yeah, it's uh, it was just we had uh, daily mass for the farmers then because. Uh, Farmer's Day started at the crack of dawn, you know, so uh, Mass always came first. What time I, was Mass? Oh, like 5 a.m. Oh, praise God. Wow. Yeah. If, if, if that late, you know, it depends on the you know, time of year. So you were but, formed early by your father, by your relationship oh, yeah, with your absolutely. father. Wow. So I, I had, I was, I was gifted with that, uh, with a great dad that, that really instilled Catholic values in me. So uh, Wow. He didn't just talk young, about he, it. He did it. Yes. I was afforded the opportunity of two years of Catholic school when I was in middle school. So there was a lot of formation that, that, that took place early in my life. I uh, went to a seminary retreat that really uh, spoke to me. Um, I really thought I had a vocation at that time, and, and I think the Lord was definitely calling me in that direction. But when I went back to public school, uh, the ways of the world just kind of took over, and um, I drifted away from that, unfortunately. But I think as time passes in each of us, we're all called to a vocation at every step of our life. You know, the vocation is not always to uh, holy orders. You know, it's to fatherhood, marriage, things of, you know, a lay ministry, things of that nature. You know, God's always calling us to himself to, to, to be the men that we're supposed to be, that we're born and created to be. What kind of farming did you do, Andy? Yeah, you know, Dad farmed rice, and then uh, eventually with soybeans. You know, both very essential crops. You did know, he ever make that. any rum out of that rice? Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. But I, I agree with you about the, this vocation thing. I got to tell you, when I was nineteen, I had a powerful conversion experience in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and I just loved Jesus so much. I mean, it was I was obnoxious, and so people began to say to me, y y "You need to become a priest." And I just remember when I was a senior in high school in a real boring social studies class, I felt this infusion of the Lord. This is before I had the experience, the charismatic experience. Like a light bulb turned on that I could someday father a child. And I could someday bring an eternal being into existence. And everything in my life changed from that moment. Every decision I made about studying later, working three jobs to go to college. All of that was because one day I wanted to be a dad. I mean, I felt that so deeply in me as, as, as a calling, I guess. But then I went through that process of everyone saying, you need to become a priest, you know? And 
I had this beautiful, I would say, wonderful, beautiful time with the Lord for several months, and then it got to the point where people kept saying, you need to become a priest, and it was really a test for me to say, are you, are you call me Lord, but am I your Lord? And so I had to, I remember I fasted for a week, and I went up to this Benedictine monastery up in New Mexico, and while they're on retreat, I finally just said, Lord, as hard as it is to serve you, it's harder not to. I surrender all my life, whatever you want in my life, uh, we will do. And then I remember the next morning meeting the, the woman that was the mother of my children. But it's a, it's a vocation. Absolutely. It's a vocation. The, the laity has its vocation and its calling. Uh, and, it's, and, and we need to fully engage in that vocation and fully you know, live our lives like that. What do you think uh, 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 the situation is now, Father, about the, the, the crisis of, the, I call it the crisis of manliness. What do you think the situ, what, what thoughts do you have in regards to that, Father, Father Sinclair Oob? The, the biggest thing is, I think that we just face a crisis of not having a rite of passage for young men. Uh, begin, in the 90s, I read Robert Bly's book, Iron John. Great book. And, and that is just so important and he describes how in aboriginal and tribal areas where there's a clear rite of passage where the boy is is literally kidnapped by the tribal men out of the out from the hut from the mother and then goes through a process of trials and then when he returns back he comes back but he never returns back to his mother's hut again but rather now stays with the men and we lack that rite of passage uh, as a society. And we're seeing more and more as we're seeing the number of children being born without fathers, the even the opportunity for mentoring to take place to how that, how one becomes a man is not taught in a physical education class or a, or a sex class in high school, but it is by being apprenticed by good men. And we lack that process because first off, we have too many men who do not stand and take responsibility for the children that they bring into this world. Right. And then the, and then as an outgrowth of that is being we're asking women to do something they know nothing about, and that is train young men to be boys. Well they yeah, a lot of the women boys. hate yeah. men too because they've been a, they've been betrayed by men. So they're man hating women that are raising sons and the sons get raised in confusion. And, and, and you don't want to dis, dismiss the fact that being male is not seen as a value. When we, when we start talking about uh, the interchangeability of parents, that you don't speak of fathers and mothers, you just speak of parents. Or the interchangeability and, of genders. Yeah, yeah. And so we need manliness. Think, that, there's, that there's no difference between having two women are two men raising a child because they're just parents. And yet what we know clearly is that there are significant things that men bring in the raising up of their children and how they bring that up. I've really, really been impressed by Jordan Peterson, which may bring yeah, a, he's lot of got a lot to say. To yeah. Fan, but he really helps young men to figure out how to become young men. He talks about responsibility. Body. Yeah. You know, one of yeah. the big things. We're talking and with so Father. About Go ahead. Father, we're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back. Okay. Father Sinclair Oob is, is with us, and, and uh, Andy Sonia is with us. They're both uh, lead, lead the, uh, the uh, Christ in You event in Orange, Texas, September 26th. What's the website, Andy? Christinyou.info. It's a men's conference. It's open to all knuckle draggers, right? You don't have to be right. super holy to go. Yeah. High school and, year and up, upwards. No, no, no top High school year, so like confirmation age and upwards yeah yeah and, and i get to be the speaker this year so i'm really stoked about right. that we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure deep adventure ministries is grateful to notre dame federal credit union for underwriting the bear wozniak adventure on ewtn notre dame federal credit union provides car loans mortgages sba loans and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, 
we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My co-guides today are Father Sinclair Oob and Andy Sonia. And, and Father was talking about how our young men uh, lack two things. They lack having a real man in their lives, father, fathering uh, man in their lives. And uh, there isn't a rite of passage uh, anymore. I know you mentioned Robert Bly. Uh, some of his books were, were really good. Iron John, I think it was. Yes. Um, that I I loved that book too when I was younger. You know, I think for me, my rite of passage was probably playing football because I had, I had other brothers with me and had a coach coaches that I super respected, and and I know that changed my life. It challenged me in a lot of ways and it changed my life. But listen, men, I know you don't think you're able to do it, or maybe you think you do, but young men need to be mentored. Here in Hawaii, my wife uh, talks about it. She 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 says it's really obvious to her that there's a company of men here and that the older men uncle the younger men. In fact, all the younger men, if they're 10, 15 or 20 years younger than me, they call me Uncle Bear. Everybody here is an uncle or an auntie. And there is this kind of this separation where the men get together and it's the younger men and the older men together and you see them going out. It's usually probably surfing big waves is kind of a rite of passage for the men here, the young men here, or they go out and they, they get skilled in in uh, becoming a waterman, sailing, or or, or spear fishing, or, or or fishing, or thing, just regular fishing, with their uncles. But here, the younger men are uncles. I remember when I was running the world title, a young man uh, acted out in the lineup, and uh, I uncled him. I, I called him in. I said, "You you are you are not allowed to surf in competition for a year." Uh, and a year to the day, I called, and I you know I, I rebuked him, I corrected him, I, but I loved him. And the year of the day later, I called him, and he came down to the beach, and I gave him a big old hug, and I said, "Welcome back. Now you're, you're welcome to surf." But he had acted out in a way that was not not right to a woman, and so I, I uncled him by correcting him, I uncled him by exhorting him, and I uncled him by loving him and bringing him back. But men, go teach confirmation classes. Go teach confirmation classes. There's not a more critical time in a young man's life than that confirmation class age. Go there. And all, you don't have to know theology. You just have to know Jesus. And by by the way, teaching confirmation, you're going to learn the catechism, and you're going to learn to go deeper with the Lord. And part of that, too, is just you need to be a part of a company of men. And that's why Father Sinclair Oub and Andy Sonia have uh, the Christ in You uh, conferences. Uh, the conference on September 26th that I get to uh, come and be the main speaker, ChristinU.info is the website. After men come to the event, do they? Is there other? Do you get them involved in small groups, or what? What happens after they come to that event? Yeah, we, Andy, we've yeah. got we've got some 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 things for men to do here. Uh, in the past year, uh, we we started that man is you group. Great uh, fact, program. We, yeah, when you and I were in, in Dallas for CMLA, uh, I ran into uh, Mark Hartfield, who is the kind of president. a rookie, kind of a rookie. Yeah, kind of a rookie. No, yeah, and I uh, think he's praying about it a little bit. Yeah, and uh, he 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 got me in touch with the right people, and uh, we we started a group here uh, this past year, and it is slowly growing. We've we've gone through our first year, but it it creates an avenue for men to group because uh, guys, we can't we can't get through all of the crisis in our lives on our own. You know, uh, as you said before, iron sharpens iron. You know, we, we have to be there for each other. And it's not less manly to be able to share the things that are going on with your life to another brother. Because together, we can get through just about anything. You know, yeah. it's, it's great fellowship time. And it's great education, religious education and fellowship. So That Man Is You is such a great program. We brought it out here to Hawaii. Um, one of the great things about it is that it's a turnkey program. They just say... You need this man to, you need, like, this This is the team you need to get, like, five or six men or more if you can to start. And this man does this every week, and this man does this week every week. And they have an online uh, website that people can access, your own your own, per, your own group's website. 
it's turnkey. It's it's like the right. way men like to do things, you know. It's like it's a it's systematized. They set you up with everything, everything that you need, the tools that you need. You just have to provide the men to to, to make it happen. You need uh, three men to start, I think. Get two right. or three men, and then they will gather a few men, and then once the ball gets rolling. Right. Yeah, that man is you as a as a uh, program that's uh, put out by Paradisus Day, and they're very thorough, and they they provide. A spring and a fall curriculum, and uh, I think they've got three or four years worth of, worth of uh, uh, classes that are uh, in their library. Hey, most of them, they like to have them like early in the morning, like on a Saturday morning, so you don't take away time from your family. And it starts out with a teaching, and then you talk, then you talk story with each other. I think right. it's usually coffee, right? <laughs> right. You start, you start out breaking bread, and you, and you, you have time to socialize and, and kind of chit chat a little bit about the things that have happened since the last week when you saw each other. And then you sit through a video session, which is very informative. And then you have time, with, which in, in the best part is the small group. You yeah. break in small groups and, and you, you really get down to the meat and potatoes of what's going on in my life, what's going on in your life. You know, and, and just that, that sharing and com camaraderie uh, yeah. helps build us up, you know, because the world out there tries to tear us down. And together, we yeah. need to And you know what I like about it, too, is no politics are allowed to be talked about. That's right. You know, it's, uh, but they do talk about sports. As I recall, uh, the first thing they do every time is they give you some sports statistics. So when your wife asks you, what did you talk about? You can give them some sports statistics and don't talk about <laughs> the, the real stuff. Never mind. We just talked about sports. Oh, yeah. Did you know Lou Gehrig? You know, that's about it. But you go, but it really does give, give you traction in your spiritual journey and the virtues and in, in understanding Catholic teaching. Father, you're involved with a, a project right now. Father, uh, Sinclair Ube. We're talking with Father Sinclair Oob and Andy Sonier from Orange, Texas, where we're going to have the Christ in You Men's Conference September 26th. Go to ChristinU.info to find out more and to sign up. But, Father, you're involved in a really cool project with a, a former um, Navy captain or... Uh, Merchant Marine captain. And But let me, let me... I wanted to make a comment about how men engage back in the church again. Yes. Um, because it's it's very, very difficult. Because many of the things that the men used to do in the church, because of insurance liability, they can't do anymore. Back in the 50s at St. Anne's Church in Beaumont, there was a pastor there that would take the altar boys out to the levee to go water moccasin shooting with, the, with 22s. Now, Catholic Mutual would be all over us if we even just suggested the idea of guns the and poison Guns and poisonous snakes. Sounds delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so you tastes like chicken. Men, yeah, <laughs> you, you look at, at the op, what can men what did men used to do in the church? Well, the men used to paint the church. They literally, my grandfather helped build St. Elizabeth Church in Port Ages because he was a carpenter, and my dad helped him with that because it was a family of carpenters. And so there were all these things that men could engage with. So you had the men sort of taking care of the outside of the church. And the women were inside the church and doing religious education or, you know, all these other types of things. Talking to men who are duck hunters, they'll sit up in a, in a duck blind, freezing their butts off in the silence, in the presence of God. And, the, and you ask them, well, where do you pray? They pray in the duck blind or they pray in the, in the deer blind. And so the church turns around and says, well, what we're offering you to uh, is to come to Mass, spend an hour with kids and your wife singing glory glory and praise songs and uh, and has nothing to do with his own personal spirituality because we're right. so sort of afraid right. of that, that men's right. spirituality. So uh, I think we as a church, when we're planning stuff, we're just saying, okay, guys, we want you here, but the only thing that we've got for you is for women and children. And the yes. guys say, thanks, but no thanks. And they go back to their duck blinds, and we really have to think consciously of how we can better engage men in it. And this man is you is certainly a, a that man is you. Axe has been a <laughs> powerful, powerful thing too. Axe is another great avenue. How do you spell that? A C T S. It's, it's a, they can find it axe.com probably or something. Yeah, like axe.org, axemissions.org. Axe what? Axe A C T S missions. Org. Well, you're doing something, you know, but that's just it. That's why when you have the That Man Is You program, men develop relationships. And then next thing you know, they're going out wild boar hunting or something or fishing or something. But you need to start having uh, manliness is not uh, 
it may not be politically correct, but you know, you see so often, I mean, I talk about the genderless male. That's what they want us to be. Mm-hmm. Just, and come in, and mass is a beautiful thing, but it's it's a very passive thing in terms of the man, the, there's the people in the church pew, and men want to get up and work and do something. So so I, th- I think that it begins with the men's conferences, and then from there, the men uh, start joining these small groups. And then we're going to do that that manly thing called the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. You're going to make me wear a tie or a bow tie or a tuxedo or what, have Father? To, you're going to have to dress up dapper and <laughs> participate in that. That's a program that I think began in, in, in Great Britain, and it's literally around the world. And on this particular day, it is a international fundraiser for prostate cancer research. And they've also hooked up together with Movember about mental men's mental health, especially concerned about the high level of suicide. Especially about concerned about Andy's mental health. So that's right. That's right. all that money is just going to go right to Andy for. <laughs> yeah, send the funds to me. But I got to say, Father, I just uh, battled prostate cancer. I went through radiation treatment. And in fact, this is the first time I ever have talked about it. Uh, just I'm just on the other side of that, three months outside of it, and the, the, the cancer has diminished dramatically. But um, I think it's really cool that the, the men are getting together to do something about this, you know, battling that. They, they, concent- they concentrate on men dressing up in a distinguished, dap- dapper manner. James Bond. And riding, and riding classic motorcycles like, you know, 1967 Triumph Bonnevilles or oh. other classic bikes and, uh, <laughs> and expressing, uh, or, or cafe racers. And bobbers, so they're they're saying, okay, the, the the cruisers and the baggers and the sport bikes, you know, that's not the emphasis on it. And so it, it you know, if you watch the videos on YouTube for distinguished gentlemen, yeah. you're seeing like a motorcycle museum taking part in. This I got to rent a tuxedo, right? It'd be great if you had one. I wear my kilt and my Prince Charlie jacket. Oh, that's so cool, man. I don't think I have a version of that to wear, but I've been, my <laughs> wife and I, my wife and I during this during this crisis, you know, we've watched every single James Bond movie. So, I'll just I don't know. I'm, I probably have to be more uh, the. Uh, I don't think I can do the the Daniel Craig version of it, but I'll got I got to get my. I'll try to. I don't fit into tuxedos, dude. Name you is, know, name I look, you know, Wozniak. Ukrainians aren't yeah, made for probably. tuxedos. What's that, Andy? <laughs> the name is Wozniak. <laughs> Shake and not stirred. So, uh, yeah, we actually bought martini glasses for the first time in our lives, too. <laughs> so, but that's going to be really cool. But we've only got a minute or two. Can you tell me a moment uh, just about this this captain that you're working on his beatification? Yeah. So, so his virtue, guy, his vir- yeah. Yeah, this guy, uh, he, he was born in Philadelphia. Uh, he attended the Pennsylvania Maritime Academy and he began sailing in the 1930s uh, as a quartermaster. Which and what's his, the, what's his name? What's his name? Leonard LaRue. Leonard Captain LaRue. LaRue. Captain LaRue. Leonard LaRue. And he he uh, he became second, came up the Hall's Pipe, became second mate. He participated in, in what was known as PQ-13, which sailed from Iceland to uh, Murmansk, Russia in 1942. There were 19 ships. Six of them were sunk uh, in the process. So it was a very, very dangerous time. He survived World War II. And then Beginning of the Korean War, he became captain of the Meredith Victory, which he sailed from uh, Virginia through the Panama Canal to Oakland, and there loaded uh, military cargo for Korea. Uh, before he left Oakland, he made three stops. One was at the office for Moore McCormick Lines, which was the shipping company. He stopped at the, Mer- the Marine Military Transport Office, and he stopped at Old St. Mary's Church in San Francisco to say a prayer. Well, we we got ten more seconds. Okay. So the big <laughs> thing is the big thing is that he uh, he uh, rescued fourteen thousand North Koreans over Christmas in nineteen fifty. Two years later, left the uh, left the sea and joined the uh, Abbey St. Paul Abbey in Newton, uh, New Jersey, where he lived the rest of his a Benedictine life. Abbey. Yep. Yeah, and I'm and, a Benedictine of late, you know. So well, we got to go, Father. This is what this. There's always leftovers at a feast, right? That's right. We'll, that's we'll, right. So we'll talk. We'll have to talk story more on the other side of the men's conference. The Christinu.info is the that's website, right. Andy Sonia okay. and Doctor Father Uba are going to be the speaker there uh, for the full day event. I think there might be cigars the night before or after, and the next day we're going to have distinguished gentleman motorcycle ride. It's going to mm-hmm. be cool. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. Hey man, 
I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. Mahalo for your Kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Today we have a guest coming to you from Texas. Andy Sonier, he's uh, one of the members of the Christ in You Men's Conference. He and Father Sinclair Aubrey are the main instigators behind it because they live in Gator Country. We call him Gator for short because he's always instigating. Uh, but we didn't, haven't had a chance to really dig deep into Andy Sonier's terrible past, his wicked past. Uh, actually, we want to talk about that because everybody has a personal journey, a personal adventure that they're on. And you were raised as a Catholic on the farm. Your father was very devoted. Uh, and then you went away to college, and uh, you, didn't you? Weren't you an athletic trainer? And it, didn't you develop that as your career at one point, right, as an athletic trainer? That's right. Uh, you know, in high school, I, I uh, served a little bit as a student trainer, and messed around with that a little bit. But I had I had so much time that I had to spend on the farm with my dad, and I loved every minute of that. Don't get me wrong, but I did have the opportunities to uh, to really develop in the athletic skills in high school, uh, and I was a little bit behind athletic. Be, athletically but i wanted to stay involved in sports and athletics the best way that i could and i uh developed a, a love and a skill for athletic training and uh i went to make state in uh, lake charles uh, which is not far from my hometown of venton and uh met uh, jim murphy there he was the athletic trainer and uh gave me a great opportunity to serve as a student trainer there well what do you see that what do you see in the comparison between training athletically and training to be a man of God. What do you see? Do you see uh, uh, comparisons yeah. there? There, there's, there's, there are some comparisons. Uh, I know at the age of the college athlete, uh, you're going through a lot of discernment at that point in your life, and uh, you're really finding your way uh, athletically. And as you mature, it turns into more of a uh, discernment of spirituality, and one can can lend itself to the other because when you train athletically you become disciplined and when you become more uh, spiritual in life you have to have that same discipline to draw from for your prayer life and things of that nature you know discipline is everything that's kind of why jesus called his apostles before they were apostles disciples right, right. it's got the word discipline right in there it's a critical critical word and you can't uh you cannot really grow in virtue on, unless you first establish the, the virtue of discipline. I will get up at a certain time every day. I will eat this. I won't eat that. I will devote 40 minutes in prayer. I will go to my job. I will, I will work. I'll give 
my studies or my work as on to the Lord uh, at noon instead of going out and eating a Whataburger like you and I love. Uh, I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to spend time with the Lord. And then, uh, and then I'm going to apply myself uh, to my, my work. So discipline really involves a pattern. It's like Jeff Caven says, you could tell someone's priorities by the rhythm of their day. What does, how do they spend their day? Are they spending their day, um, I don't know, watching TV or, or nowadays computer games, or, or are you just hanging out with friends at a bar, or are you devoting yourself to in discipline in, your, in what work God is calling you to do? Because you said something really interesting. You said you felt a need to become an athletic trainer and to be involved with sports. That's, that's, a, that's actually a wooing and a drawing of the Holy Spirit into the path he has for your life. But you can either respond to that with discipline or you can just respond to that when, you know, in, or not respond to it at all. So, yeah. so you, you were talking about how the discipline in sports is, is a virtue that develops and works in every area of your life. What, what other kind of uh, allegories or, or lessons can you learn as an athlete? Uh, competition. Competition mm. uh, is, is, is very uh, strengthening. Uh, you know, as, as we say in our, in our men's groups, you know, iron, iron sharpens iron. And uh, that's a form of competition in itself. Wow, uh, I never thought of it that way. You know, it's, it yeah. can be. When you've really got sword be. against sword, that's not playtime. No, no, it's not. It's a testing you know, of your metal, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I, I tend to think of uh, the last thing that, that, that Jesus told the disciples in, uh, in Matthew's gospel is, you know, he, he called us all to change the world. To have courage and to go out and change the world, uh, he said to, to go forth and make disciples of all nations. Discipline again. Discipline. That's correct. And you know, how many men have you brought to Jesus? That's a challenge for us, because you know you're going to get asked that one day. How many? How many men did you bring to Jesus? It's, only, it's the only and, thing you can take to heaven with you, right? Is other people. That's right, and. Jesus may ask other men, who brought you to me? You know, hopefully it ties back to you. And then on the other side of the coin, we have to think of how many men did we bring to Satan as, a, as an example? So everything involves how we create an example towards others. So you're These saying men's... lead by example. Yes. Number one, what kind of example are you? You want to be a man of virtue. You're you're all about the virtues. Uh, live a virtuous life. Uh, well, show show men how to live as a Christian man. You know the word the word virtue has as its root word vir, which means man in Latin, right? I mean, you can't really right. be a man unless you're a man of virtue. That's right. And so to That's grow, right. so you know, there's that scripture verse when I tested for my first degree black belt, it was from David. Uh, Lead me to the rock too high to climb, and I will climb it. And then he, had, he said another verse, too, that's so cool. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You can't bend a bow of bronze unless you've been pulling a bow, you know, pulling a lighter bow first, right? There's that training process, and we can walk away from the training of the Lord, or we can enter every day diligently into saying, yes, Lord, how can I serve? How will I train today? And I think with a basic ways a man trains is by fulfilling his kuleana. If what, what has God called you to do today? Do it. Do it really well. Do it more than what God expects. That should be the first thing we ask God in the morning when we wake up. God, I give you myself. Tell me what you want of me today. And then we have to discern that. We have to have co contemplative prayer where we actually listen. Mm. We have to listen, and God's going to tell us what he wants from us. And then we have to be men of action. We have to go out and do those things. Our very nature is 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 to be is is action. Uh, right. The thing about it is, uh, we could start with the small things, right? God says, "Look to the ant." You know yeah. how productive he is and how they work as a team. Uh, and we're humans; we should be able to do even greater things than that. But we have to start out with the small things. And I think the smallest discipline is get up, have your prayer time. Do your workout if you have to go, or if that's the right time to do it. Do your job really well, 
And also there's the discipline of what not to do. I'm right. going to eat this and not that. I'm going to not spend my money on this. I'm going to save it for the future. I'm going to invest it in the future. Um, and all those things just sound so almost mundane. But they're yeah. what the, the key to freedom is discipline. Yeah. The more you discipline yourself, the more options you have in your life. Yeah. Not and less, hey, more. We're not perfect men either. We have to <laughs> we have to rely on each other. Right. You know, to to strengthen each other and to uh to keep us on that path because we're all sinners, every one of us, but we have to know how to get ourselves back on track, both going to confession uh, and, and making sure we discern God's will. Now, those are two key things to keep ourselves as virtuous Christian. And, and, and God called men not to be isolated, but to be part of something. You know, he yeah. called the 12, not as individuals, but to come together as the 12. And so that's why you have this men's conference, right? It's to gather the that's men right. together, help them. Tell, tell us about that vision and about the event well, on September 26th in Orange, Texas. This is, this is our third one. Uh, we've had two uh, very successful uh, men's conferences uh, the past few years. Uh, you know, Father, Father Sinclair uh, approached me and a couple other guys that were sitting around planning a retreat. Uh, he says, hey, guys, what do you guys think about uh, a men's conferences? I'd love to have a men's conference at our parish. Uh, you guys interested in something like that? And none of us had really heard of a men's conference, didn't know what it was. So uh, after after he had left, we kind of milled it around, and, and uh, we all agreed we had a lot on our plates as it was. But after a couple of weeks, it just kept, it just kept uh, tapping on my head, all, just putting that ping on my heart. You know, you need to look into this men's conference business, you know. So I, I, I caught Father Sinclair after Mass one, one evening and said, hey, I said, uh, remember you talked about the men's conference? Let's, let's, let's do this. I'm all in. He said, come to my office right now. Let's I go. love that. You said, I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah, well, when, I, when I do something, I want to be all in. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, the, that lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. That, mm. That's, you know, we can't, have, we can't be lukewarm. So it's either all in or none at all. And so... This is the the Christ in You conference, the third one on September twenty sixth in Orange, Texas, uh, and I get to be your uh, I get to be your speaker this year. Yeah, um, you, what, <laughs> you're you're going to come mistake. in. Yeah, well, I don't know about <laughs> that. We'll see. I think we're going to have a great time. Yeah, you know, we're going to smoke a few cigars and. Uh, oh yeah. We'll uh, make the a little money for charity. Cigars. Yeah, <laughs> and you're going to do the you're going to do the distinguished gentleman ride the next day for immense prostate cancer. Uh, right. But but tell me uh, we got a roll. But tell me where where is uh, where can they find out more information about the conference? Go to go to christinu.info. Oh, christinu.info. Info, yeah, not okay. org. Dot info, and uh, click on it. Uh, go to conferences. Scroll down. Find register today. And and click. join us. It's yes. going to be it's going to be like from get there around seven or so, and it's going to be over by about three or four. Yeah, we'll, we're, we're going to wake each other up with a little coffee and donuts, have mass, and Bear's going to do his thing. We're going to rock it. And we're going to rock the house. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you guys can stick around for evening mass on Saturday if you choose. Amen. We're going to have, uh, we're going to have a great weekend. Well, we've been talking with Andy Sonier and Father Sinclair Obrey about the Christ in You Conference in Orange, Texas on September 26th. Uh, but we got to he head out of here until next week. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit Aloha, you. Aloha. Aloha. And as they say down Texas way, Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.